this is my friend Bridget. We're staying in Salisbury for the weekend and today we're planning to visit Stonehenge, a very mysterious prehistoric site. Very mysterious. So, how are we going to get there? Well, it's about 15 kilometres away. Oh, it's too far to walk then. What's the best way? Lots. And I bought a map. There isn't a train. There's a bus which takes about 40 minutes, but it's going to be difficult to get back. Can we hire a car? It's too expensive. Why don't we hire bicycles? Bicycles? How much is it? Six pounds per day. That sounds fine. What do you think, Bridget? Mm, fine. How long does it take to cycle to Stonehenge? About two hours. Two hours? Let's go. Okay. This is definitely the most interesting way. Yes, I'm the most tiring. Now, let me see. I'm pretty sure it's this way. Turn left here, and then follow the road all the way to Stonehenge. Bridget, I want to sleep in a bed tonight, not a field. Are you ready? No, hang on a minute, I want to take a photo. Very artistic. Look, we turned left off the main road here. Mm -hmm. Followed this road for a few kilometres. Mm. Yeah, here we are, just next to a farm. What farm? Well, there it is, over there. Oh, OK. All right, well, let's ask the way. Excuse me. Is this the right way to Stonehenge? Straight up there. Just keep going. Thanks very much. Thank you. OK. I think they're disappointing. Well, they're not very big. They look much bigger in the picture. Over 3,000 years old. That's older than most of the pyramids in Egypt. The tallest ones are almost four metres high, and some of them weigh about 25 tonnes. Some of them came from over 200 kilometres away. They pulled them 200 kilometres across mountains. The heaviest stone is 50 tonnes. But what is it? Well, nobody knows. Some scientists think it's a temple, perhaps to the sun. Other people think it's a clock. Penny, where are you? Look, I can see a different way back. Maybe not as interesting as the trip here, but it's shorter. Oh, we've only been here a few minutes. Yes, but it's but already five o'clock. It's going to be dark soon. Come on. <laughs> Are you sure this is the shortest way?
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, what have you got left? Got some fish left. Oh, great. Um, but uh, no chips, please. Please? Please. Thank you. Thanks very much. Not him. Excuse me, do you mind if I sit here? I do, actually. Do you mind if I sit here? No, no, not at all. It's Tompkins, right? And you work in the sales department, yeah? Simpson. Accounts. I'm so pleased that we can have lunch together. I really enjoy meeting new faces, don't you? Hmm, sometimes. What do you think of the food here? I don't eat here very much. Well, in you, it does give you a chance to meet people from other departments. See, so you've left your fish. Very sensible. I always say that you can only get really good fish near the sea. I know most seaside resorts in this part of the country. My wife and I are keen swimmers. Mind you, she's a better swimmer than me. Why don't you Can shut you swim? up? Sorry, could I have the salt, please? Could I have the salt there, please? Oh, sorry. What do you think of that train crash yesterday? I hardly ever travel by train these days very expensive and it's dangerous look I don't know how to say this I'm tired I've had a busy morning I don't want to chat have I made myself clear found it sorry you were saying what's the matter lost your appetite I know what you mean that fish hang on you haven't eaten your dessert you have it Oh! Excuse me, may I join you? <laughs> This is John Kirby, 
my grandfather, and this is the story of his life. His parents were from Northern Ireland. In the 1880s, life was very hard there with no work and little to eat. Many people died of hunger. My grandfather's parents decided to make the long sea crossing from Ireland to Canada to look for a better life. John was born in Montreal, Canada in 1894. Life in Canada was much better than in Ireland. My grandfather's family weren't rich, but they always had enough to eat. Every summer they went camping on islands in the St. Lawrence River, where Indians still lived. Then in 1903, both my grandfather's parents died. They caught flu, which was a serious illness in those days. My grandfather went to live with an aunt. After five years with his aunt, my grandfather ran away to New York. The year was 1908. He was 14 years old and alone in the world. In New York, he worked in different hotels, as a bellboy and then as a barman. One day, he went to the railway station and got on a train to Boston. He didn't have enough money for the ticket, but took the train anyway. In Boston, life got better. My grandfather got a job as a clerk in a big company, and he met the man who became his best friend, Charlie Murphy. Charlie was from Liverpool in England. In 1909, my grandfather got a job as a steward on the big ships that went from New York to Liverpool, and in Liverpool, he always stayed with Charlie's family. and it was in Liverpool that he met Mary Madden, his future wife. But they didn't get married immediately, and my grandfather continued to work as a ship steward. In 1911, my grandfather was on the Republic when it hit another ship and began to sink. Fortunately, no one died, but my grandfather lost everything, clothes, books, photographs. He arrived in Liverpool without a penny. In 1914, at the age of 20, he became manager of one of the first cinemas in Liverpool, the Palladium. But then the Great War began. He became the manager of a factory where women worked, making ammunition. In 1916, my grandfather and Mary got married. They had three children, two girls and a boy. My mother, Maureen, was the oldest. After the war, cars were becoming popular, and my grandfather opened a garage. But when the Depression came, he had to sell the garage. He wanted to go abroad again, but my grandmother always said no. So he stayed in England with his family and got another job in a garage. He died in 1975 at the age of 81.
swim one and a half kilometers, cycle 40 kilometers, 10 kilometers without stopping, that is what Sarah Springman does. Sarah is a triathlete. Today she is training for a big race next weekend. <sighs> Sarah, I can't believe you just run 10 kilometers. Oh, well, you don't look at all tired. No, it took my time today. Um, Sarah, what is the triathlon? Well, triathlon is really three sports in one. Swimming, cycling and running. And the first big triathlon took place in Hawaii in 1978. And now it's very, very popular all over the world. Do you train every day? Oh yes, I train at least four hours every day. I usually start with a run in the morning and then I'll swim for one and a half hours. Nearly there. Ten strokes to the end. Kick hard. Well done. After that, I usually cycle. For example, today I'm going to cycle for 50 kilometers. How long will that take? Oh, about one and a half hours, I hope. This is Mike Cheese, who is also a triathlete. He's training for the same race, and sometimes Sarah and Mike train together. I started doing triathlon two years ago. Before that, I was a long distance runner, so now I have to train for all three sports. To be a successful triathlete, you have to train extremely hard, but at the same time you need to look after your body. It's very important to do different exercises for each sport. Triathletes are obviously very fit, but they get injured a lot. This is Roy, Mike's physiotherapist. As you can see, I'm working on his knee at the moment. Just check to see that. How does that feel, Mike? It still hurts, Roy. Mike, how did you do it? I fell off my bike. I was going around a bend too quickly. Ooh. Roy, are there any other problems? Well, he has a weight problem. I've told him if he weighs less than 65 kilos, he can't come in the gym. This is what you need to give you the energy for the big event. Lots of carbohydrates. Mike and Sarah, what advice do you have for anybody taking part in a triathlon? Never eat within four hours of the event. Always warm up carefully. Don't run too fast at the beginning of the race. Drink a lot of water before and during the race. Don't train if anything hurts. And don't train too hard. Right? Okay, go on, Sarah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Portsmouth International Triathlon. The time now is just 11.30 in the morning. We have race starts at exactly 12 o'clock. It's definitely going to be a tough race on Saturday. The swim will be the hardest for me. I want to finish the swim in 23 minutes and the cycling in about an hour. I'm going to try and finish in under two hours. I feel ready for the race. Last year I finished third in 2 hours and 17 minutes, so I hope to do better this time. Run will be difficult because there are some women who can run faster than me, but I want to win.
The swim was terrible. There were too many people and I couldn't see anything. And we've got Sarah Swingman coming out. Sarah Swingman in second place. And I think it's Carol Wilson from Farm in third place. I got lost in the swim, then my water bottle broke during the cycling, so that was really difficult and I got very thirsty. In the cycling, I came round a corner too fast and came off the road, but I didn't fall off. I was the second fastest runner, which surprised me. My time was 2 hours 11 seconds, and I came 11. I was really pleased with my time, but not my position. Run out of his socks yet again, crossing the line in uh, what we think is 12th place. I was in second position for the whole race until the run, and then I ran badly and came fourth. Two hours, 17 minutes overall, same time as last year, a lower position. But I did my best. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, full flag across the line, here she is. Big effort, big hands of Sarah Finman.